Hey everyone, today we're talking about solving for variables in literal equations. We'll do six problems together, which are the ones shown here on the screen. Before we get started, help me out by pressing that like button below and subscribing for good luck. Let's go. Literal equations are these equations with a bunch of numbers, variables, and symbols, and your teacher will ask you to solve for one of those variables. Your answer won't be a number, but rather an expression with a mix of numbers and variables. If you look closely, a lot of these equations are actually formulas that people use in math, science, and engineering. Looking at the first example, this is actually the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. The first step I have here is just to locate the variable x in the equation. In this case, it's just right here on the right side. The next step is the same as any other equation with numbers. You need to isolate the variable so that the x is on one side of the equation, and everything else, including all of the variables and numbers, are on the other side. First, let's look at things we can add and subtract away from the side with the x. Since there's a plus b, we need to get rid of it by doing the opposite and subtract b. Always remember, everything you do to one side, you need to do to the other. Since y and b are variables, there's no way for us to combine them. So we can just say that y minus b equals mx. We're getting closer to fully isolating our variable x, but there's still the m in front of it. When you see mx, it's the same thing as m times x. So to get rid of it, you need to do the opposite and divide by m. Let's do it to both sides. And you're left with the expression y minus b divided by m equals x. If your teacher's a stickler for where the variable is, I'm just gonna flip it so that it's x equals y minus b over m. As you can tell, this isn't your typical solution like x equals three, but this entire expression is our answer. Here we have another literal equation. So for step number one, let's just find the variable in the equation. For this one, we're actually solving for the variable y. And the y is just located here on the left side. So our end goal is to get an expression that looks something like y equals whatever. You'll notice on the left side, we have a positive ax. So in order to get rid of it, let's do the opposite and subtract ax. Let's do it to both sides. We'll get that ax minus ax cancels out. Let's bring down the by. C minus ax, we can't simplify it any further because they're not like terms. So let's just copy that down. We'll end up with by equals c minus ax. For our next step, let's figure out what we can multiply and divide away to isolate our variable y. Since it's by or b times y, let's get rid of it by doing the opposite of multiplication and divide by b. Do it to both sides. On the left side, the b's cancel, so we're just left with y. And again, on the right side, we don't have any like terms that we can combine. So our answer is actually y equals c minus ax over b. E. Fun fact, this equation is actually how you find the area of a trapezoid, if you ever wanted to know. For our first step, let's find the variable in the equation. The variable that we're looking to isolate is b and it's located here on the right side in the parentheses. Looking at our next step, there's nothing that we can really add or subtract away from that side. However, you'll notice that we have the one half h on the outside of the parentheses. This is actually the same thing as h over two, so I'm just going to rewrite it. In order to undo the h over two that's being multiplied by b plus c, we can do something that's unique to fractions where we multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is when you flip the numerator and the denominator, which is 2 over h in this case. When you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, you pretty much just cancel it out. Let's multiply the reciprocal on both sides. 
On the left, we have 2a over h. On the right, the fractions cancel out, so we're just left with b plus c. Now you'll notice that b is pretty much isolated except for this positive c. So in order to get rid of the plus c, let's do the opposite and subtract c. Now we're left with 2a over h minus c equals b. Again, I'm just going to rewrite it so that b equals 2a over h minus c, and that's our final answer. This equation is actually how you find the area of a circle. For step number one, let's just find the variable in the equation. In this case, we're looking for r, which is right here on the right side. For the next step, there's nothing that we can really add or subtract away from the r. However, we do have pi being multiplied by r. This is a little more complicated because it's r squared, but we'll deal with it a little bit later. We do have this pi that's being multiplied by r squared. So in order to get rid of the pi times r squared, let's do the opposite and divide by pi on both sides. Now we're left with a over pi equals r squared. In order to undo a square, you need to take the square root. And like anything else, you need to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Now we're left with the square root of a over pi equals r. Again, let's just flip it so that we have r equals the square root of a over pi. I don't know, I kind of like these because it makes me feel smart that I'm writing all of these letters and symbols that people usually don't understand. This one I don't think is any type of special equation, it's just a random literal equation. Here again, let's find the variable in the equation. In this case, we're looking for y, which is here in the denominator. I'm going to skip the adding and subtracting because there's nothing to add and subtract away from that side of the equation. Looking at what I can do in terms of multiplication and division, I want to get the y out from the denominator. So in order to do that, we can actually multiply both sides by the entire denominator, which is y minus c. You'll see why I'm doing this in the next step. So now we have 2 times y minus c in parentheses. You could have distributed in the last step, but we're not in a rush here, it's fine. <laughs> On the right side, you'll notice that the denominator cancels out what we've multiplied. Now we're just left with x and we don't have any fractions. On the left side, you do have to distribute. If you don't know how to distribute, no worries, I have a video for you here. The first thing we'll do is multiply 2 times y. And then we have to distribute again. You have to multiply 2 times negative z, which is negative 2z equals x. All right, so this is looking a little easier. This is pretty much the same as what we've done. Since we want to isolate y, let's get rid of the negative 2z by doing the opposite and adding 2z. Let's do it to both sides. We'll get that 2y equals x plus 2z. Again, for this equation, we can't really combine anything because they aren't like terms. They don't have the same variable. But that's okay because our end goal is just to isolate y. We're almost there, but we have the 2 in front of the y. So to get rid of it, we need to do the opposite of 2 times y by dividing by 2. Now we're left with y equals x plus 2z over 2. And that's our answer. Literally, all of the variables in this equation are r's, so this is going to be the worst thing to talk through, but let's give it a shot. First, let's find the variable in the equation. We're looking for r sub 2. You'll notice that r sub 2 is actually on both sides of the equation. The rules kind of go to shit here. Sorry, I cussed. I'm going to bleep that out. 
My main goal here is still to isolate R sub 2, but we need to do that by combining both of the R sub 2s. I don't see a clear way of doing that right now, so I'm just going to distribute and see what happens. Distributing the left side, we get that R R sub 1 plus R R sub 2 equals R sub 1 times R sub 2. You guys getting this? The issue is that R sub 2 is still on both sides of the equation, so I want to get both of the R sub 2s on the same side. I'm going to do that by subtracting R R sub 2 from both sides of the equation. This gets rid of the R sub 2 on the left side. I feel like I'm talking in a different language. You'll notice that both of our R sub 2s are on the right side of the equation, which is perfect. Basically, we can pull out the R sub 2. So on the left side, we still have R R sub 1. And on the right side, when we pull out the R sub 2, we have parentheses R sub 1 minus R. And if this didn't make sense, you can kind of backtrack. If you distribute this back out, you'll get the expression that we just had in the step before. We're so close, we're actually one step away. In order to fully isolate R sub 2, we can actually divide by everything that's in the parentheses. So dividing both sides by R sub 1 minus R, we'll get that R R sub 1 over R sub 1 minus R. On the right side, this cancels out, so we're just left with R sub 2. This is our answer. I feel like we've been through too much. I'm just going to leave it like this. You can flip it if you want to. <laughs> but yeah, this was our last equation. We made it to the end, guys. Thanks for watching. If this was a helpful video on solving literal equations, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what other topics you want to cover. See you in the next video.